center throughout the planet. We had embassies all over. We were an example of how you could be a global power and not oppress other peoples and not come into other people's lands and not take from them and not subjugate the native peoples. We went through countries all over the globe and enshrined in the beginning of our in our, in our constitution, it was the first constitution in the world that enshrined human rights based upon non-discrimination. In other words, if you were a slave and you came to Hawaii, you were instantly freed. The kingdom was very good, very good to its citizens. Kanaka Mali, Kanaka Uivi, and Poe Haole as well. In fact, one of the greatest opposition against, against the colonization of, and false, false, false annexation of Hawaii was the Chinese population because they knew that in America, Chinese were not considered to be human. They were considered to be almost near slaves. Part of the reason why, part of the reason why people we decided to, our kingdom and our elite decided to do that was because of the discrimination and racism against our elite when they went to America. The treatment of our kings and queens, they considered them Negroes and they used far more racist and far more awful language than that. And it's for this reason that divisions are out there. We unite with the people of Charlottesville. We unite with Black Lives Matter. We unite with Cuba. We unite with Puerto Rico. We unite with the Philippines. And we unite with Guam. We unite with peoples all over the world who are standing against subjugation, who are standing up against, and uniting together as one. For those of you in Hawaii, my father, those of you who know my father, Kihei Soli Nihel, those of you who know him understand that he was one of the great revolutionaries of our people. And where did he get his training? Where did he learn from? He, was lear he learned from the Black Panther Party when he was in San Jose. When he was in the military, a big part of his great awakening as a political consciousness 
was when he was in the military and they called him a nigger. I'm going to say the word because it's really important to understand what our people here are facing when they go away and why we unite. Why do we unite with Black Lives Matter? Because our people have been oppressed abroad. And what happened is he was he was targeted, he was focused on, and he was he was made an example of for being a black man, being a Kanaka Maoli man, and he was held for many days and he was beaten severely to try and get out of him a confession of a crime he never did. And this was while he was in the military. And that was the beginning of his awakening. My family is a military family. We support and honor the veterans of all nations, those who, who provide support and, 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 and fight for their people. In particular, most recently at Standing Rock, over our, our brothers and sisters in Ferguson when their communities are under attack and also our people, our brothers and sisters, our sisters and brothers, and all of our uh, lesbian, transgender, queer, bisexual, mahu, every single, every single ethnicity, gender, uh, who have fought and are fighting for and continue to fight for freedom. So this is what we are here, this is what McKinley represents. We can't, the lie of the Confederacy is not that what would have happened if the Confederacy won. But the, the truth of it is, is that while it, the Nazi Germanys, while in Nazi Germany, they were hanged for their roars of genocide. The people of, like the Thomas Jeffersons who owned slaves, the, uh, the Robert E. Lees, the, the people who participated in the subjugation of slavery of a whole segment of population, the genocide of Native Americans are honored. They became senators, they became presidents, and they're upheld. They became the present McKinleys of the world. So when we stand here, we stand in unity with all of our sisters and brothers and our lesbian, gay, transgender, queer family, Mahu family, to stand against oppression. Ayo! 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 Would anybody else like to say anything? <laughs> um, my name is Grace Alvaro Clifton. I'm here today um, as a mother, as a, as a a member of this nation who has really stood by my brothers and sisters here. I wore this shirt. Um, from my people's band in the Cordillera because we too were subjected to McKinley's benevolent assimilation. And so today is a day for me where I'm standing shoulder to shoulder to you saying we are not assimilating anymore. We're not assimilating to white supremacy. We are not holding our tongues to make you comfortable. We are speaking the truth and we're speaking it in volumes. And so thank you for that. Anybody else? Um, um, I am Jewish, and I just after the past like week or so, I've been kind of been like both scared, but also so incredibly proud of who I am because this is what Jews do. We are under constant hatred constant fear and to be able to find a group that is supportive of not just Jews but also Black Lives Matter, you're with my best friend and and just to have someone in an area where there is a small Jewish community where I haven't really found my place yet I'm incredibly honored to be here and just to have a big family just to support just everything is just really beautiful to me and I am very incredibly grateful for all of you. Yo. 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 So I would like to invite anybody at this point they have this area right here has been roped off specifically to keep us out of um, being around the McKinley statue because apparently there was a story that an angry word of Hawaiians were gonna come and tear it down today and so and what's that? 
We're always being called hordes. Yeah, we're hordes. Yeah, right. Look at, I'm such a horde. <laughs> they did that with, on Mauna Kea, yeah? Yeah, yeah. restriction of, of non-violence. So know. for those of us who want to consciously make the decision of civil disobedience and trespass, and, and hang on high way to take a picture on here so we can talk about the petition. You guys can come over. We like make that space for those who want to participate in the civil disobedience of non-violent direct action. petition to celebrate the unity and solidarity of peoples throughout the land, people who have been hurt by McKinley and his presidency. We're starting the discussion because that's what we do as a community. We start discussions because a lot of our people don't understand the role that McKinley has played throughout the world and how his presidency was the beginning of a lot of subjugation of the peoples throughout the world and Pacific. In particular, Puerto Rico. We stand in solidarity with you. Yo. Yo. Free Puerto Rico! Yo. Yo. If you would like to start educating your families, your communities, your school systems to uphold the symbols of white supremacy, please join our brothers and sisters throughout the world who stand against subjugating each other. Because when we ask for the freedom from oppression, we are not just asking for freedom for ourselves. We are also speaking and demanding that we will no longer participate in the oppression and subjugation of our relatives throughout the world. and sailed throughout all of the Pacific. When we had those vaas 
and we had the ability to go and visit all of these same places and nations that the United States has participated in the subjugation of, we came as relatives and we came as allies and we came in trade. We had the superior technology and did not utilize it to subject others. And so the vase that we have represent all of us needing to get in this canoe together and work together. And I'd like to end with one final oli that to me represents what I see right now, the whole alelepo the cresting of the common people. And this is a prophecy by Kapihe, in which I believe this is the time that we are talking about right now. And what it says, Eiho, Ana Iluna, that which is above will be brought down. Epiyano Lalo, that which is below will be upheld and lifted up. The islands will gather as one. A kuu and a kapai up. And the walls will
and um, me myself am pretty deep on the inside and I can tell you what I see every day those people who think they have power they don't have this type of power they do not have this type of power that's here with us so um, for us at a firm it's really important because what we saw you know what we sometimes see and fall victim to and are guilty of ourselves is going into our ethno cultural ethno natural national groups and our silos you know and we'll come together to protest and lock arms or stand next to each other but then that's it then we go back right so affirm for us and what we hope to make connections to some of you with even if you don't join us or have a different space is to be the experiment you know it's, it's not the first time it's been done um, but we want to just strengthen that and we want to strengthen the connections with trans women with native women um, with immigrant women with um, with our Muslim friends in, in the community and all these people exist and they're important. Um, we also wanna assert to today something that anti-blackness um, is really viscerally demonstrated through is that Micronesian lives are valuable and precious. Yes. Um, because for us, white supremacy isn't the only problem. It's the root of the problem, but anti-blackness is how it comes out and anti-blackness has historically been used against Native Hawaiians, against Filipinos, um, whether it's don't drink at this drinking fountain, to you don't have the right to even speak your own language. So that at the heart, you know, some people call it settler colonialism in academia and some of our activist circles. Some people call it self-hate. And that's why we need the truth. And that's why we need to tell the truth about not just this statue, but everything else that we've experienced, even on a day-to-day -day basis in our own lives. And I know that that silence is really dominant and really profound, and I hope that you feel like a firm is here for you to give you that space. Because we're not afraid to be to be at the front line with you. Um, so please keep in touch. Anybody else who wants to speak right now, it's open to you. We'll stay here as long as you want. Um, any last? Young, and I actually am a PhD student in anthropology. I'm also a Native Hawaiian trans woman um, and a Kanaka Maoli activist. And I, I've been organizing for quite some time in different um, places. And um, so I, I, one of the things that motivated me to take part in this march today is that um, as, a, as a lecturer here in Hawaii, I've experienced um, hate, I've experienced death threats um, simply for teaching about racism and scientific racism in particular. Um, I had a um, alt-right nationalist student in my class who threatened to kill me and um, who threatened to damage my life. Um, so, um, but I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, you know. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we have to continue to do is to break those spells, you know? Because a lot of time they get big bark, but, you know, no bite, you know? And um, it's one of those spells that they try to use to confuse us, to make us afraid, so that we don't um, come out together in public to show solidarity and to stand together in defiance against this kind of hate. So um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about is um, the three pillars of white supremacy, I know that some of you may have exposure to um, Andrea Smith's work on the three pillars of white supremacy, um, but I think that she gives us a really good sort of framework for thinking about um, white supremacy and how it operates and how it um, affects everybody's lives, right? So the first pillar of white supremacy, according to Andrea Smith, is this idea of slavery, right, and capitalism. So capitalism requires uh, exploitation, right? Um, and so in the building of the U.S. nation state, right, it was slavery. And in particular, the marriage between blackness and slavery, right, that allowed the U.S. to amass tremendous amounts of wealth, right, and to situate that wealth within white communities, right? And they used the racialized logic to justify that sort of exploitation, okay? So we must always be 
um, on guard to think about how those systems continue to operate, right? The second pillar of white supremacy, right, is this idea of native disappearance. And that's the idea that indigenous people, no matter where they are, must always be disappearing because whiteness needs property to exploit, right, to make money, and also to claim lands, okay, over those, um, over the original owners of that place, right? And this is also part of the idea that Kanaka always have to be disappearing, right? That's part of the, the, the second pillar of white supremacy. And then the third pillar is this idea of Orientalism. And that's the idea that we must always be at war with an other, okay? We must always go into these brown countries, brown and black countries, right, to take their resources and a white nationalist movement, okay? So we must always be aware of how those things operate, and it operates through war, and it operates through dispossession and displacement in other places. So those are the three pillars of white supremacy, and I think that we must always be conscious of how those things work and operate in everyday life, so that we know what we're fighting for and what we're fighting against. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Mahalo. Does anybody else want to talk? There's so many countries that have been destroyed and their resources, and we stand in solidarity with everyone. We accept everyone. The King of Hawaii accepts everyone. There is no such thing as division. But it's good to see new faces to come together to support one good cause. It's awesome to see new faces. So, um, I hope when you guys go back home, you guys continue to fight because this is not over. And it's just getting started. So it's all about educating the world, educating the world, and educating our own people. And unfortunately, a lot of our people think they're Americans, and they are not Americans. So. <laughs> That's the challenge that we face as Kanaka Maoli is spreading truth to our people without offending them. So I hope you guys can do the same thing. So we stand with all of you. We stand for uh, indigenous rights for all indigenous people because we were the original inhabitants of this land should not be stolen by white supremacy. Aborigine. So we stand in solidarity. We're going to get our nation back. And I hope you guys get you guys' nation back or your land back too because it's in the wrong hands. It needs to go back in the hands of the people, not the head of government. Yeah. Mahalo. Does anybody come up and share your mana'o? Your breath? Everybody, I have my uh, Manyatlu over here, our brothers and sisters, uh, who are also from Guahan, this is my daughter. <laughs> uh, thank you for yes. everyone who helped plan this. Um, you know, in Guahan, kind of like Hawaii, we are indigenous Chamorro people. We have um, suffered under uh, U.S. imperialism for over 100 years. We remain an unincorporated U.S. territory. And with everything that's happened recently with North Korea, um, as many of you have probably heard or read about, um, our people still had no choice or no voice in any of the decisions that North Korea or the United States uh, president decides to make. So um, we stand in solidarity, of course, with everyone who's here, um, all indigenous peoples affected by U.S. Um, imperialism and colonialism. And um, we hope that we can continue to support each other because we all know it's not easy. Um, and as indigenous peoples, we suffer a lot um, because of all of this oppression. So, Sijas Maasi, thank you very much. Um, again, to all who hosted. And uh, in Guam, we say Biba or Nalatla. So, can I hear everyone say Biba? Yeah. Biba! Right, Nalatla! Let's give life back to our people. That's what we're here to do. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Max. Hi, brother. 
Aloha Kako, Hafari. Um, I'm also from Guahan, um, but I currently live and reside in Makaha, so I made it all the way from the other side of the island. Um, because it's important for me to show my children, the three over there, that hatred <laughs> is not going to win and that love will drive hatred away. Um, there have been a lot of a lot of questions from my children around the kinds of slogans, you know, let's punch a Nazi out, let's do this. And what would Martin Luther King say? Martin Luther King would say, love will win. And that hate is not, it's not the way to move forward. Um, so I'm here because of my children and the white supremacist philosophy and ideology that has made my people invisible um, can't stand any longer. And as shameful and as hurtful and as painful as the events in Charlottesville have been, as painful and hurtful and scary as the events um, happening with North Korea threatening our island, not because North Korea wants to, but because the 45th is, is bullying. The 45th is playing into his hands so that we can take our eyes off of what's really happening. That's, that's the truth. That's what people are talking about. Um, and I'm proud to share that my son, inspired by the Fujis, um, wrote a rhyme that he doesn't want to share. I can't rap, but I'll read what he's written. Limestones. So on Guam, is anybody familiar with the Lati stones? Okay, so the Lat Lati stones are um, the foundation blocks that our homes in ancient history were, were held up by. And the, our ancestors were buried beneath those laddie stones so that our, our spirits or the spirits of our ancestors would give strength to the families and the generations that would grow and thrive and live. So um, you'll hear reference to that. Limestones, laddie stones, lands not far, far from home. Korea sets the tone, spying private drones. America, America, please, won't you free us? We know and we know and we know definitely you would not want to be us. Can't you see us? If you can't, struggle is defeat us. Most will never meet us, and still you'll never beat us. When we need you most, Trump the dump is host. The apocalypse is in post, no matter late show hosts. Jokes. Thank you. Daniel Cooper. Um, I am Haole by blood. I, my ancestors are all Haole. And um, I think one thing to remember, like a lot of Haoles, I think have forgotten that we were once colonized too. Um, I read this interesting book called Caliban and the Witch. And during, especially like the Middle Ages, um, there was like a new Rome, right? Rome had fallen and new Rome was trying to subjugate many um, European communities uh, in the form of the witch hunts. They got um, the communities to fear their own medicine makers and burn them at the stake. Homosexuals were thrown onto the fire too. They were called faggots because they were like a bundle of sticks. That's how much they were valued. Um, uh, uh, even our own kupuna, like our own elders, who are often the medicine makers, were, were often accused of being witches too. So Haoles are isolated from their own elders. That's why a lot of Haoles put their own kupuna in retirement homes because they're afraid to take care of their own kupuna. They don't, they have, don't have value for them. Um, that's all, uh, it was all orchestrated on purpose to divide and conquer communities and subjugate them to an empire, right, in the form of um, New Rome, okay, and um, and then that later uh, they use the same logics to uh, colonize the whole world. And the papal bulls um, says that oh, because people all around the world aren't Christian, you can do whatever you like to them, slaughter them, kill them, torture them, as long as you get the gold and bring it back home to Rome. 
Um, and that's what they did all across South America, all across America. It's the same logic. Um, so, um, and that's why, we, interestingly enough, if you notice that McKinley, um, there was Greek and Roman uh, columns and Greek and Roman uh, art, art, and there's the, um, there's the Roman owls, those were not Pueo, those are Masonic owls, and it goes back to empire, imperialism, right? So, uh, sadly, a lot of my fellow Haoles, my um, white brothers and sisters, are the most blinded. They have the worst mind diseases of all because they think that they're winning. And maybe they're higher up on the pyramid than others, but they're still missing out a lot. They're, they're living in fear, they're living in greed, they're living in ignorance, and they are perpetuating violence, terrible, terrible violence and causing suffering. So, um, I guess I guess I just want to do a shout out to all my um, Holly brothers and sisters out here that broke through that, and as well as all of my brothers and sisters, all colors, doesn't matter, um, because racism is just a spell to divide and conquer. It's all about divide and conquer. So, um, aloha everybody, and uh, thank you for letting me talk. I love you guys. All right, any last call for words? Me? I already spoke. <laughs> um, um, some of you know Kaiolani Milham, um, and part of what I hear is Forrest kind of stand in for her. Oops. Yeah. Put it down. Put it to your, yeah. to your mouth. To your mouth closer. Okay. There you go. Kaiolani Milham, for those who know her, has had to go back to the mainland. Um, she's fighting cancer. I miss her a lot. And, you know, I hope that people will pray for her, that she can return to the island and come back to the fight. And I'm kind of here to stand in for her, but also because I believe Hawaii so could be your turn to a sovereign nation. I just wanted to say a quick... Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to say a quick message to Kanaka here. Uh, I spoke at an uh, organized event of a lot of Micronesian students called We Are Oceania. And I asked a simple question, how many of you um, were made fun of for being Micronesian in class? About half of them raised their hand. I said, how many of you were made fun by, the na by, the, by a native Hawaiian for being Micronesian? Almost all of them decided to raise their hand, right? So. We're talking about cellular colonialism, what does that mean? It means we gotta stop acting like our oppressors. We need to stop oppressing men here. This is a woman-led rally. It's really incredible to see so many women here. I am guilty of this, but our, our partners are oppressed at work and they come home and they're oppressed by us, right? By not cooking enough, by not cleaning enough, by getting violence by, during fights, by, by, by there's so many ways that we, that we uh, contribute to this this oppression of white supremacy, of male supremacy, of, of, um, of uh, patriarchy, and, and it's really up to us to hold each other accountable, right? Not just in these spaces where we get pat on the back for holding our partner's hand, but in spaces where there's no women around, and we hear a word that we know we shouldn't be comfortable with, and we just roll our eyes instead of saying, hey, what the fuck, right? And it, that's always going to be uncomfortable because it's going to knock us down a couple notches. You're not going to... You're not going to be respected in your brother's eyes, right? Because masculinity is a, it doesn't just hurt women, but it hurts men too, right? Masculinity is a prison for us. So when we talk about these issues, we got to talk, we can't just be talking about race. We can't just be talking about indigeneity. We need to be talking about gender because no one's going to, the, the alpha, to be an alpha male is literally impossible. You can be bigger than the rock you're still gonna feel shitty about yourself because you're not that rich. You're still a billionaire richer than you. You can be as rich as Donald Trump and you're still not gonna feel good enough because you're just a slob of a human being, right? <laughs> so that's, it's, a, it's an impossible standard. Yeah. Just the whole idea of masculinity cannot be redefined. It needs to be eradicated. There are more differences within a gender than between the gender. So why do we harp on what it means to be a man? Oha, Oha right now is pushing an initiative on men's health. How do we become more healthy as Kanaka? 
and it's all about oh we gotta be stronger and man up and like what the hell <laughs> no we gotta we gotta be more nourishing to ourselves and to our babies we need to be more sensitive at home and we need to just stop pretending like anything's any of those things have to do with what is in between our legs right Bye. so um, please stop oppressing the women in your lives the reason why we're going to win this battle is because although there's a lot of power out there from the oppressors, we have one thing that they don't have, and that's the truth. Right? So they say we're in a post-truth world. Maybe with alternative facts, but there is such thing as a collective truth. And as long as we continue to allow each other to tell our stories, then that collective truth will be heard. And I know it's frightening. There's nothing... Audrey Lord. Audrey Lord said there's nothing more frightening than speaking your truth. The only thing more frightening than speaking your truth is not speaking at all. So when they come after the women in our lives, we will lock arms and follow the lead of the women in our lives. When they come after... A person with a penis does not belong in the girl's shower. There is no one that knows struggle more than a, a trans woman of color. Right? So we're gonna follow, we're gonna follow their lead. And with that being said, I think I took too much time on the mic uh, in this space. So uh, keep it up. Uh, thank you for doing this. And Mahal, I'm sorry for all the times I pressed you. Okay, so Kalama's gonna wrap up and with a pule, or Mikey's gonna come up. <laughs> Just can you hear me? Oh. Before um, everybody disperses, on, a, on behalf of Affirm Hawaii, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Like, this was really not. We've been talking about this for a while, but we didn't really have time or energy to put behind it until Friday. So just the sheer number of people that came out today is awesome. Um, if you want to keep in touch with us, we're on Facebook, Affirm Hawaii. It's A-F-3-I-R-M Hawaii. Um, we're very active on Instagram. Our Twitter is a little sad at the moment, but we'll get there. Um, and... We have, we're doing a small fundraiser. We made, um, my girlfriend made enamel pins for us. They say our slogan, which is, we are militant because we matter. So come see me if you would like to purchase, $10 each, and Kamala, Kalama's gonna send us out, I think. Let's join up together. Uh...